Hi there guys and girls, Dave here from Player.net and today I'm here to show you my video review of this Bit Phoenix Colossus Micro ATX case. Is it for you? Let's find out. So I thought I'd start with the outside of the case and show you guys. Uh, just what it looks like with all the panels and the roof and everything on but um, we'll start uh, again here at the side where we have the two USB 3 ports, the headphone and microphone jacks the uh, hard drive uh, indicator light and the just the power on light uh, which are both blue like this colour here as well as a reset and power switch now we also have this light bar which is something I'll show you in a second which uh, I think is very nice um, but I need to just quickly turn the lights off and uh, we'll go through that so you can see it in a bit more a uh, bit more colour there we go so it starts off with a, there's a small button on the uh, on the left hand side here I don't know if you can see my hand, yeah you can left hand side uh, so it starts off with the red colour which in the video may appear a bit orangey but you'd have to take my word for it, it's very red uh, followed by blue okay now as you can see obviously um, it's, it sends it through a bar just on behind this plastic here so there are um, you know where where the where the side panel joins the front panel and stuff there's a there's a there's a light bar inside so um, it might not be so noticeable in the video but it's definitely there but uh, it's not annoying it's just um, it's so it transfers the light into this side panel here. Um, we have the blue, the green, which is very nice, and then there's one final option, which is a, a kind of pulsing uh, color. We'll just leave the video running for a second, and it uh, also switches between the colors as well. So it pulses red. And then onto blue, and then onto green. But we'll leave that pulsing for a minute so you can see you can see in the video. There we go. So it's green. Um, uh, the the light itself is powered by uh, a SATA power connector which is inside of the case so you just connect it to one of your spare SATA power plugs from the power supply and that's how it gets the power just thought I'd uh, let you know that as a little bit of a note but we'll turn the bit, turn the lights on um, I'll spin this round quickly so we can see the other side but uh, it's just a plain side panel like I said about the button to swap the colours is right here just underneath the the the, the white plastic, and uh, yes, yeah, so it looks like that. I guess you guys quickly will want to see the uh, the rear panel with the building. Um, so I've used a 120 millimeter water cooling radiator, one of those all-in-one things, uh, micro ATX board, and then the five IO panels here that's where you mount your graphics cards and we know whatever else, sound cards etc so that's it for that um, I'll get the side panels off now and we'll come back in a second and ok back again with the side panels removed carrying on earlier on from um, what I was saying about the light bar as you can see here, it comes around the side and there's this um, clear piece of tubing almost like a what's the word almost like a kind of fiber optic cable where it sends the light through okay so it comes up this tube here and then it joins uh, this be this piece of tube in here and obviously this is the side panel so that's how uh, that's how the two connect and line up so then obviously um, it sends the light through the panel just thought I'd point that out quickly while uh, while I had the side panel. Um, this is the the rear 
of the case. Um, it's mounted um, 90 degrees to normal, so it's one of those um, it's one of those 90 degree layouts. Uh, so I thought I'd mention that, but this is the uh, yeah the side case. The power supply is mounted here uh, in the front of the case. So what I've done is I've mounted it with the fan facing here so that it takes in fresh air from the top through the door and then straight into the uh, straight in the power supply and straight out the bottom so the power supply doesn't at all interfere with the uh, with the cooling efficiency of the case um, regarding the top I'm actually just going to lift you up a second I've mounted the two included 120mm uh, Big Phoenix fans uh, on the top uh, pointing down so their intakes and that is to cool the graphics card okay I just want to let you know what I've done for my build and then obviously when we talk about temps it might be a reflection of that but uh, that's what I decided to do so this is this um, yeah all the cabling and things I've not made a uh, not made a massive effort obviously because there's no windows or anything like that when the panels are on it's not going to be seen but uh, it's uh, you know it's nice and tidy it's uh, a modular power supply which um, if you have a long graphics card uh, may be a bit of an issue but that's something um, something I mentioned when I'll spin the case around and we can see the other side but um, I'll do that again now excuse the noise but there we are okay what I'm going to do is just quickly refocus the camera there we are perfect now uh, this is the other side I've had to uh, take off a couple of the cables that are on the um, on the side panel you know for the power switch and things so those are those so we can ignore those but they uh, just go around the back and into the top of the motherboard here which is in the back there um, the same again for this one but um, I've mounted two uh, two solid state drives on this uh, included bracket here on the side as well as a three terabyte hard drive which is this on the back here now there are like other places you can mount the drives including uh, in the floor of um, of the case here which um, I might try and zoom you in for there's not too much light there to be honest so. but there's mounts in the floor um, to mount uh, two three and a half inch hard drives um, you know so if you just say you have the one solid state drive and one mechanical then you could just mount them both in the bottom take this plate out and then um, obviously it would be a, little, a bit more tidier um, regarding the the, SATA, the the SATA power connector that's this uh, for powering the lights on the front so I've just connected it to a spare SATA power adapter here um, yeah so that's this the bracket with the hard drives um, so it's all neat and tidy um, you know and out of the way the airflow the radiator is behind here so what I might do is come back again I might just remove this so that you can see uh, what I mean on the inside of the case so I'll, I'll quickly do that now and we'll be back and we're back again with the uh, panel removed here so it gives you a, uh, quite a quite a lot of a uh, you know clearer uh, view of the build inside the case here I thought I'd start with the uh, with the calling I went uh, like I said earlier with a 120 millimeter you know uh, all-in-one uh, loop CPU caller here um, so, so in this case this is a, a call it uh, eco 2 but something like a h100 sorry a h80i fit in here no problem obviously it has a slightly thicker radiator and things but uh, doesn't in, impede the uh, you know the heat sinks or anything here at all so uh, it would definitely fit in there with no issues um, air coolers yeah same again you know there's plenty of room here so no issues even with something like a, you know a Noctua NHD15 would fit in there no problem in a micro ATX uh, motherboard um, the default layout of the fans that came with the case were uh, in the bottom here and uh, in the in the back panel here. So what I would do if you're going to air cool 
is uh, just leave, leave that fan where it was, take this one out and put it in the top to give you some uh, additional cooling for the graphics card. That's what I would do personally. Um, next thing to mention was the, the fully modular power supply. Now as you can see here, um, as you know, as it is modular, the uh, where the cables come out um, did actually like kind of impede the um, being able to fit my uh, MSI 680 Power Edition. So this, this is obviously the big beastie card, um, probably one of the biggest uh, air cooled cards there is actually in all honesty, and uh, obviously. Um, you know, it did affect the uh, the fit the fitment here and things. Um, so that's obviously another thing to bear in mind. Um, I know most um, uh, most MATX motherboards or some can be used in uh, SLI. Um, providing uh, providing the graphics cards no longer than this bracket and uh you're willing to sacrifice fans being in the top obviously due to the uh due to the size restriction then um i don't see it being a problem but like with a card uh, this case then um uh you know as long as there's a space uh in the slot here and like you go in the next one up then obviously it will fit in here no issues um but you know if it has to go in the next one up then uh yeah you're gonna have a problem fitting it in as long as it's just not as long as this, but this is the uh, this is the bracket for uh, mounting, um, you know, a CD drive in the front of the case. Um, but yeah, I'm just running you through all the options and things, you know, things I've noticed and such and such. So, uh, so yeah, that's that. Um, we'll uh, we'll move on to the temperatures now. Okay, so for the test setup, I use an Intel Core i7-4770K at 3.9 and 4.5 GHz respectively on the Asus Z87 Griffin MicroTX motherboard. Uh, the graphics card was an MSI GTX 680 Power Edition and the CPU caller was an Corlitz Eco 2 CPU caller with a fan exhausting the air out of the case. So I'm free to go with this quick uh, slide here. I just want to show you guys how we work out the delta temperature. So what you do is you take uh, the ambient temperature, which in my case when I made these results was 23 degrees here in my flat, so it's quite warm. Uh, and then you take that away from the core temperature, which is all the core temperatures added together. And then you divide that by the number of cores, which will give you an individual number. Okay, so that's the obviously that's the average temperature and then you take that away like I said from the ambient and that gives you the delta temperature so with that boring science lesson out of the way uh, here's my results um, at 3.9 gigahertz at idle I had a delta temperature of 16.3 under load I had a delta temperature of 44.5 degrees and bumping up the core to 4.5 gigahertz and also the voltage increased my delta temperature to 19.8 degrees at idle and then finally under load uh, the delta temperature was 48.5 for 4.5 gigahertz yeah so there we have it guys I'm uh, I'm sure you would agree with me that the uh, temperature performance from this case was uh, was pretty exceptional and um, you know I'm very pleased with uh, how well it managed to perform sorry I just keep looking at it, I've got it right here um, but yeah it's a, it's a great case, it looks fantastic um, as always uh, pop on over to the player website while I'll uh, have a written uh, conclusion about my, my personal thoughts and things on it as well but um, I'm, d I'm definitely going to be giving it uh, the gold award and uh, and the editor's choice award because I think it's a fantastic case. Um, so yeah, uh, I really like it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for watching. I've been Dave from Player Donut, and I'll see you again soon.